Pastor Tom, you said, you hope that we will emerge stronger. And uh, I think what we're going to hear today is that we, that is a true statement, and we will emerge stronger. That is without a doubt. I know that in my heart. And hopefully the things that I'm going to share to you today, with you today will help articulate why I believe that's true. And hopefully that they will resonate with you and help you understand what that means to you and why you believe that to be as true as well. But I do want to take a second. I want to pause. And um, over the last couple weekends, I know, um, I, I believe the second Sunday in October is Pastor Appreciation Day. Yeah, maybe. I, yeah, <laughs> Pastor Appreciation Day. Even... And it's Pastor Appreciation Month, I guess, as well. So I just want to say thank you, Pastor Tom, for everything Certainly. you've done. Yeah, thank you. Because here's the thing. There's managers and there's leaders. Managers are necessary. They follow processes, procedures. We've got to manage through things, right? Yep. But what leaders do is leaders chart the course. They don't just steer the ship. And when you chart the course, you chart into unknown territory. And I think we can all agree that through Tom's leadership, we've been able to, as a congregation, chart through some very unknown territory over the last few months. Your unwavering leadership has helped us chart the course, and we thank you for that, Pastor Tom. Thank you very much. And as a congregation and through Tom's leadership, alongside the efforts of Brandy, Sue, Janelle, Steph, Terry, Jacob, Alec, and all the wonderful volunteers we have, Grandview has thrived through this pandemic not just survived. I was going to share with you some statistics, not knowing that they're in your packet, so I'm not going to bore you with those statistics, because people don't remember statistics. They remember how you made them feel. They remember what you said. So that's what I want to share today. I don't want to share boring statistics, but I do want to make mention of the important things that we see in that on those charts. Because the goals and the numbers do not define us, but they are a barometer to articulate the tangible results of our efforts. You see, John Wooden said, success is peace of mind. In knowing that you've done the best to become the best you are capable of becoming. So by that definition, if we do everything within our control, at the grace of our creator, with our best effort, then we have succeeded even if we fall short of a goal. So yes, in 2020, have we maybe talked about wanting to increase attendance and do all those things? Yes, we set those goals prior to the pandemic. Those were not things we knew were coming. But I kid you not, we have done a, an amazing job through the leadership of Tom and all the efforts of the Grandview staff. That is more than success. That is what we call significance. But who we are today is not who we've always been. And who we are today is not who we will be tomorrow. Lou Holtz, another favorite of mine, even though he's no, he was a Notre Dame coach, but another favorite of mine, I'm an SC fan, <laughs> said, if what you did yesterday seems big, then you haven't done anything today. You see, we must learn from our past through not just existing, but through evaluated experiences. We must live in our present and we must hope for the future. This is what we must do as disciples. You know, prior to the pandemic, I've, I've talked on, on some things in the past and one of the stats that's always resonated with me is this statistic of depression. You see, the there's a statistic out there that says that 322 million people worldwide live with depression. Now, to put that into some type of uh, reference for you, there's 328, I think with the census now, it's 329 million people live in the United States alone. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm kind of afraid of what those stats are today. So what does that mean to us? What can we do? We're just Grandview and Dubuque, Iowa. But what we can do is we can help facilitate hope in others. Now, I don't take the challenges of depression lightly. And I'm not saying hope is the cure-all. 
But what I am saying is it can have an impact. You know, Pastor Tom has talked a lot about hope. And a lot of these things have given me hope, have taught me a lot of lessons. You see, hope is not a knock on wood strategy. It's not some good luck tool. I hope things are going to happen. Pastor Sean said, I hope that we're going to come out of this stronger. And I'm going to tell you why hope is important. Because hope is derived from the Greek word meaning a strong and confident expectation, not wishful thinking, as Pastor Tom has taught us. This means we have done all we can within our control at the grace of God who gifted us our abilities. And what we do with those abilities is up to us. A mentor of mine talks about the four ability principles that facilitate growth athletically, professionally, and spiritually within his athletes. Because they are all one. They are learn-able. Being growth-focused with a growth-conscious mindset. And make no mistake about it, mindset does matter. Being focus-able. That means mastering the basics. Doing all the little things that make the big things possible being disciplined and consistent with them, being accountable. So that means taking true ownership, not just saying, oh, that was my bad, or I'll try better next time. No, it means taking ownership by taking action and taking initiative. And probably one of the things that we've learned so much through this pandemic recently is being change-able, which means being agile and adaptable. You see, confidence comes from our abilities. It is our abilities gifted to us by God that make what we do possible. But how well we do them is up to us. Pastor Tom alluded to it. On Friday, I was blessed to be able to participate in the Mines of Spain 100. There's 100K, which is 62 miles. And there is the 100-mile race as well. Now, I decided to go with the 100K because I said, you got to crawl before you can walk, right? Like, so let's just do 62 miles first before I even think about doing that 100 mile. And, and honestly, yesterday I was like, absolutely not. But I think um, it's weird because as time goes on, you forget the pain. And now I'm like, maybe I'll do that 100 mile. Maybe that's why people have more than one kid. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but some do ask why. Like, why do you do this? And a part of that reason is because the work towards my athletic abilities helps develop my human abilities. Because who I am today is not who I've always been. My mom was one of the 322 million people who battled depression. And she lost that battle when she committed suicide on October 16th, 2003. You see, Friday was also the anniversary of my mom's death. You see, for me, endurance racing isn't just a game. It's a way of life. It's given me a platform to add value to others because I did not adhere to those able principles for eight plus years. I was in a very dark place. But there's lots of lessons that we can learn through endurance racing. Some of those lessons that I'm still trying to process them from, from Friday and Saturday, into Saturday as people were still racing through the night. But my good friend Tom won the 100-mile race. His race taught us about taking risk, about not comparing ourselves to others as he was up against some incredible athletes whom others saying he had no chance of beating. Yet he did. Another friend of mine, Jen, Evan, even, the woman's 100-mile winner, taught us of patience and perseverance. She never led the race until mile 97 of a 100-mile race. The lesson I learned from the volunteers and the support crews taught us that we must give more than we receive. You see, one person might cross the finish line but it takes a community to get them there. My crew support was about six people, let alone. Taught us lots of lessons of adversity. You know, I faced it many times, from my legs locking up on some of the climbs and not being able to walk forward, so I, I, I figured out somehow that like, I was able to walk laterally up the steps without my legs locking up. Being agile and adaptable, and maybe not going as fast as I wanted to go, but continuing to move forward. And as the sun set and the darkness came upon us, my legs tired and my mind fatigued and going at some crazy places and losing focus, I came down this rocky path and I 
must have clipped a rock or did something and dove face first into a pile of rocks. But in my mind, and, and I had a pacer with me, so pacer, somebody that you're allowed for the last 20 miles to help keep you going. He did keep me moving. He got me up. And he said, let's just keep moving forward one step in front of the other. We don't need to run. We can walk. You know, I share these uh, not because of the athletic feats. I share these because of the human elements. The same lessons that we have here at Grandview. You see, there were all different levels of abilities and reasons for being out there. Each person had their own objective. But the common objective was crossing the finish line no matter what the time. I share this because it is more about finding strength and the ability to navigate through adversity and obstacles. Because much like these athletes at Grandview, we have had to navigate through adversity and obstacles. Because like many of these athletes, inspiring others is our passion and our objective and our mission as disciples at Grandview. You see, passion, as I learned from Pastor Tom about six years ago in a, in a, in a class, was is derived from the Greek word to suffer. Not taking ourselves too seriously, understanding we are here to serve God, not ourselves with our best effort. And that effort, that level of passion is determined by our willingness to suffer and asking what are we willing to give up in order to please God. One of my coaches talks about the rule of 10 in endurance racing. He says, 10 things will go wrong during a long course race. That is without a doubt. And we must plan for the best, but we have to prepare for the worst. Because the better you are able to accept these things as they happen, check it off the list. As soon as you're, the quicker you'll be able to assess the situation, manage the obstacle, and move forward so you can be the victor, not the victim of your circumstance. Obstacle, adversity, and setbacks are a part of the race. And they are a part of the race we call life. They are not an unlucky situation. They are not the exception to the rule. They are the rule. They make us stronger because we will emerge stronger as we evaluate our past, live in the present, and have hope for the future. Grandview is like these athletes displaying the four able principles. You know, that was clearly defined in the CAT assessment, right? I don't know if some of you remember some of the, the, the congregational assessment tool, but in it, it said this. We are a high-vitality church. Granby United Methodist Church has very high energy, sense of purpose, and flexibility. We are accomplishing the work that we feel God has set before us. We are committing our lives to Jesus and the world is made a better place because of our ministry. This is what we will continue to do because this is who we are. Mother Teresa said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Our family is God's children. And we will continue to grow Grandview. Not to get big. But because if we truly believe in what we are doing, then we must grow our family. Growth comes from being consistent and disciplined, even when it doesn't look like we're going anywhere, because it happens below the surface, not above it in some highlight reel. Growth happens when facing adversity and obstacles. Growth happens by developing the abilities God has given each and every one of us. Isaiah 40, 31, 40, 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Together at Grandview, we will keep moving forward. We will thrive and not just survive as we have. And we should be proud of that. Not because we take ourselves seriously, but because we take what we do seriously, and that is serving God. Thank you, everybody.